welcome to flutter teacher in this session we will talk about this keyword in the dart so without wasting time let's get started basically this keyword appears in two different variants in the dart one is the normal this or the simple this and another one is this with the pair of bracket that is using the parenthesis in this session i am going to talk about both these variants in detail now let's start from the first one let's understand what basically this or this keyword is this is the implicit reference that refers to the current invoking object let me explain this statement with an example i hope you might know what the reference is reference is something that can store the address of an object now why i'm saying this is the implicit reference if you observe line number 9 and 12 we have two different references t1 and t2 basically this t1 and t2 are the explicit reference because these are created by me explicitly but if you observe in line number 4 we have this so this is not the explicit reference it is in fact the reference which is readily available in each and every program and it is created by the dart for you that's why it is called the implicit reference now let's understand what is reference holds or what is reference stores basically this reference stores the address of current invoking object now let me explain in brief what do you mean by the current invoking object if you observe here we have in line number 12 t1 dot show so when this method show is get executed so for this t1 is the invoking object invoking object in the sense the object that invokes or executes the method and when this show method is under execution for that particular time period t1 acts as the current invoking object now the address of this t1 object gets stored inside the reference this and believe me all these things happens automatically it means you don't need to assign address of t1 or address of that object inside this reference so it's going to perform automatically by the dart system and once this method gets clear then the t2 dot show will execute now at this time again the method show will execute but at this time t2 is the invoking object and due to this the address of this t2 is stored inside the reference called this it means at this particular place or for the time period when show is under execution t2 is the current invoking object so it's point to be noted that the value of this goes on changing from time to time and that is based on the current invoking object value now you can observe here inside the method show intentionally i'm passing the name of reference so that when i'm printing the address and i'm printing the name of reference i can understand that this is a particular address of this particular reference means this reference is holding this particular address and i'm printing this address by using this dot hash code so when i run this program you can observe here for this t1 dot show i'm getting t1 and the address by using this reference and for the t2 dot show i'm getting t2 and different address which is basically the address of object that t2 that is this holding at the particular time period when show is getting executed for the reference t2 now let's understand the places where this reference is available so this reference is available in two different places first is inside the non static method and second is inside the generative constructor now let's look at to the situations or the places where this reference cannot be used so we can't use it inside the static method and we don't have access this inside the factory constructor this is because the static method and factory constructor cannot have the invoking object let's understand different uses of this reference in the program the most common use of this reference is seen to access the members of class especially when the class has a name conflict it means the class contains number of members that have the same name it means if we have the same name for the field and same name for the local variable so in such a situation you can see the beautiful use of this let me explain this situation with an example you can observe here we have a class test that contains the x and this is basically the instance field having the value 10 we have the method show and intentionally i have taken the local variable having the same name x with a different value 20 now you can observe here inside the main we have the object t that is the reference t and for this object i am calling the show so when show is getting called what will happen inside the print i am printing the value of x and i am printing the value of this dot x now when i run this program you can observe here when i'm printing the value of x the value of local variable x is getting printed that's why i got the output 20 here uh, but when i print this dot x so it is actually printing the value of instance variable x 
This reference is also used for passing the invoking object to another method from the given method. Just look at this example here. We have the class test that contains the method called demo. Then we have some code which is performing some activity here. Then after that, I just want to call abc dot do something. So abc is basically class that I have defined here, and do something is a method that accepts the object of test here. Now what is happening here? Inside the main, we have the test object here. Then over this test object, I am calling a demo method. Now from this demo method, I want to pass the current invoking object to the method called do something. Now you can observe here, if I want to pass this object, there is no way for me to pass that one. The only way to pass that one is by using this. So what will happen here when we write this uh, t dot demo? Basically, uh, the address of this t or the value which is referred by the t is stored inside of this. And when we call abc dot do something, so in this situation, the object that is basically the t means uh, is pointed by the t get passed inside this obj reference. This can also be used to return the current instance from the method. Most of the time, we may need to return the current invoking object through the method. So in this situation, we can find use of this here. You can observe here, uh, inside this method called demo, we have a return type in the form of test. That is, I want to return uh, the object which has called this method. So you can observe here, I have return, return this. It means this particular method demo is returning the object which has called or executed the method. Inside the constructor, it is mostly used for the field initializer and to define the initializer list. The class point has got two fields x and y and it has got two constructor point.choice1 and the point.choice2. You can observe here in point.choice1 we have the field initializer which is basically performed by using this dot x and this dot y and the second constructor that is the point.choice has got the initializer list. And to write this initializer list, intentionally I have taken this x and y. So make sure that this x and y are the normal parameters. These are not the fields. So whatever value that I have received inside this x and y, I am passing this inside the instance variable by using this dot x and this dot y. So if you don't understood what it is clearly, we have a separate video regarding different ways to perform initialization. So I request you guys to go there and watch that video to make it clear regarding the different ways to initialize the object in the constructor. Now let me talk about a very important note regarding this. So the value of this cannot be modified. It means we cannot write this is equal to something in the program. You can observe here in line number three inside the method demo, I'm trying to write this is equal to null. Basically, I'm writing null, but practically you cannot write this is equal to something. You can observe here it's saying illegal assignment to non-assignable expression. Now let me talk about this with parenthesis. Basically, whenever we use this with bracket or this with parenthesis, it is called this construct, and it is mostly used for the constructor redirection. So if you don't know what is constructor redirecting and how it is being performed, we have a separate video for that one. So I get request, go ahead and watch that video to make yourself clear about what the constructor redirection is. Let me talk about the place where this with bracket can be used. So it can be used only at one place and that is inside the generative constructor. Make sure that this with bracket even cannot be used inside the method. And if you talk about the unavailability of this, so we cannot use this inside the factory constructor. Let me explain use of this with an example. Class test has got total three constructor. First one is a default. Second is the name test.demo. And the third is test.callMe, which is again the named constructor. Inside the main, I have written test.callMe. So if you observe here in the test.callMe, we have written colon and we have this with bracket. So basically, whenever we write colon and something using this, that particular portion of constructor is called as the constructor redirecting portion, which is used to invoke another constructor from the given constructor. You can observe here as I'm not passing any value inside this, so it will try to call the default constructor. So let me run this program. You can observe here, basically I'm calling the constructor called call me. But uh, after executing this one, you can observe here the constructor called test.called, that is the default constructor will get called. And I can again change this one, means instead of writing this, I can write let's say this.demo. And when I rerun the program, you can observe here 
as I'm writing this dot demo, the constructor called taste dot demo gets called, and that is what output on the console. So if a constructor accepts the parameter, we can even pass parameters by means by using this also. So if you want to get more details about this one, because I have explained only one example here. So, but if you want to get much more details regarding this one, we have special video. Go ahead, watch that one and clear yourself regarding the constructor redacting. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really found this video helpful, knowledgeable, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.